Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 800-610-7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And if you'd like to listen to the Exxon archives, we have, my gosh, over... Craig, how many, how many do we have over eight years of archives that are available free with our compliments just by going to www.exoneradiotv.com. On the top, click Past Shows, and away you go. Mind you, you can also go there and listen to the Exxon Live Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until midnight. I'm sorry, from 8 p.m. until midnight. I'm still getting used to this new clock, Craig. I'm sorry. So that's www.exxonradiotv.com. We're coming to you around the world on the Starcom Radio Network and the Exxon Broadcast Network. My guest this hour is Preston Dennett, a gentleman that we've had the pleasure of having on the show many times before. Preston began investigating UFOs and the paranormal in 1986 when he discovered that his family, friends, and co-workers were having dramatic, unexplained encounters. Now, since then, he has interviewed hundreds of witnesses and investigated a wide variety of paranormal phenomena. He is a field investigator for the Mutual UFO Network, a ghost hunter, a paranormal researcher, and the author of 17 books and more than 100 articles on UFOs and the paranormal. His articles have appeared in numerous magazines including Fate, Atlantis Rising, MUFON UFO Journal, Nexus, Paranormal Magazine, UFO Magazine, Mysteries Magazine, Ufologist, and others. His writing has been translated into several different languages, including German, French, Portuguese, Chinese, and Icelandic. He has appeared on numerous radio and television programs. His research has been presented in the LA Times, the LA Daily News, the Dallas Morning News, and other newspapers. Preston has taught classes on various paranormal subjects and lectures across the United States. He currently lives in Rosetta, California, and his website is www.prestondennett.weebly.com. And Preston, welcome back to the X-Zone. How are you, good sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back on the show, Rob. I'm really excited. It's always great having you with us, Preston. Uh, but I but I have to ask you, where do you find time to do everything you do? Like, man, if you're taking an elixir that you invented, I need some. <laughs> You know, I actually work full-time, so this is all stuff I do down evenings and weekends, and I'm just obsessed with the subject. I'm not letting this go. I think it's one of the most important subjects we have going on here on Earth, and uh, it's really an exciting time with this particular field, Mm -hmm. with all this closure, you know, these mass sightings. So, yeah, yeah, I love it. I just love it. For our listeners who may be hearing you for the first time on the Starcom Radio Network, why don't you tell them why you got involved into UFO research? Um, well, I'll tell you one thing. I wasn't willing. <laughs> I was kind of dragged into it, kicking and screaming. Uh-huh. Uh, I heard this report on the news. It's now a famous sighting over uh, Alaska where a commercial airliner uh, saw this object which paced his plane. It was mm-hmm. on the onboard radar. It was on radar on the ground. It's a very famous case. Um, but when this was on the news... They didn't say any of that. They just kind of laughed at this pilot, and tongue-in-cheek, and moved on. And, but I was surprised to see this on the evening news, and it was just enough to break through my skepticism. And, yeah, my whole family was skeptical for the most part, um, I thought, at least, except for the ones who were hiding their encounters. Um, but are they so, still uh, yeah. skeptical? Um, not nearly as much, no. I've worked on them really hard Attaboy. over the last 20 years. But, uh... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, 
you know, there's still a few who hang on. My my older brother, he's he doesn't want to believe in it. He doesn't want to hear it. Well, maybe he just wants to give you that that skeptical family member that we all have. Because without a skeptical family member, come on, we'd be pretty kind of boring at Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, well, you know, definitely does make it exciting. You know, going through your list of books, Preston, UFOs over Arizona, UFOs over Nevada, UFOs over New Mexico, Ghosts of Greater Los Angeles, Bigfoot Yeti and other ape men, UFOs over New York, Aliens and UFOs, the Coronado Island UFO incident, Human Levitation, Supernatural California, UFOs over California, Out of Body Exploring, California Ghost, Extraterrestrial Visitations, UFOs over Topanga Canyon, uh, one in forty, the UFO epidemic and UFO healings. Um, <laughs> you, you know, I I admire you. I, I really do, because you are walking the walk and talking the talk, and you always have ever since I've known you. Can you see a change in the way society is starting to to see UFOs and the paranormal? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think it's a lot more mainstream now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I think people are not afraid of saying that they're a contactee or you know an abductee or what have you. It's definitely a lot more interest in this. I think one of the reasons for that is because once this subject grabs you, it doesn't let go. Right. And sort of just builds a bigger and bigger club. And we're, you know, the, the Roper polls and the Gallus polls say it all. You know, we're, there's an increasing belief in UFOs as time goes on, and I think it's now about. 50-50, so we're like right there at the you know, tipping point. Let's talk about your, your book, UFOs Over Nevada. Um, why did you write this book? Um, well, you know, I, felt, I feel compelled to. I'm not sure where this you know, obsession comes from, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, I started this series with UFOs Over California, yep. New York, and Mexico. And uh, the reason, you know, for, for Nevada, obviously, is because it's, I think, got a very important contribution to the whole UFO subculture. But the main reason is because there are a lot of really old accounts in these newspapers and in these, you know, books from the, the 50s and the 60s that are getting lost. Mm-hmm. And uh, this subject needs to be taken seriously. So each of these books is written in kind of a, a history style. You know, very objective. I'm not here to tell you that, you know, ETs are here to save the world or to invade it or anything like that. I'm just kind of presenting the facts as best as I can. And uh, boy, I have to tell you, each time I, I learn so much. Really? Each state kind of has its unique flavor. Well, you've only, got another, mean, you've only got another 45 books to write. Yeah, it should take me out, you know, at least, what, 50 years? At <laughs> least. But no, knowing you, you'll, you'll knock it off in about 10. Um, <laughs> what makes Nevada UFO encounters different from other states, Preston? You know, like, it's weird, you know. I found that uh, Nevada has a very unusual feature to it, and that is 86% of it is federally owned land. Hmm. And this is, you know, really surprising me. It's much higher than any other state by far. And I think this kind of has an effect on the whole way UFOs are seen. But isn't, isn't, isn't the real estate in... Uh, Nevada rather scarce, and if no one else wants it, you know, besides Las Vegas and Reno, uh, what does Nevada have to offer anyone who wants to, let's say, uh, buy real estate? Yeah, well, it's heavily urbanized. It's the, the population is, you know, pretty much forced into these city centers. Mm-hmm. And uh, unlike, you know, most states where, you know, like upstate New York, for example, has houses spread out all over the wilderness. Yeah. And uh, not not to mention does, not to mention two fugitives. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But uh, yeah, with Nevada, I think what happens because of this um, is that most of the UFO sightings that we have on record mm-hmm. are over you know, Las Vegas or, for that matter, Area Fifty One. That's where I found a lot of sightings was on the outskirts of Area Fifty One. That's where most of Nevada's sightings are actually coming from other than, you know, the military ones, which are a lot. And this is, you know, pretty normal, I think. But uh, Nevada's really there on the top of the list in terms of military encounters with pilots and 
uh, officers and things hovering over bases and things like this. Based on your your research, uh, Preston, what are the top three most important Nevada UFO encounters? Yeah, you know, I thought about this. I kind of like to do this with each state I research. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think that with Nevada, the third most famous one, and I think that it's having a lot of influence, is, you know, Charles Hall and his oh, yeah. story about the tall white. Mm -hmm. um, um, he's still, you know, doing the lecture circuit, talking a lot about that. And uh, so that, I'm, I think, is probably one of Nevada's most influential encounters. But second to that would be the Las Vegas UFO crash. And this is a surprisingly well-documented UFO crash that not a lot of people know about. I mean, certainly we've all heard of Roswell and sure. Kecksburg and mm -hmm. Aztec. But this Las Vegas crash was went almost entirely uninvestigated for years, except for uh, by Frank Edwards, who picked it up. And uh, he found out that, uh, well, I mean, it's an amazing story, really, this what they thought was a meteor at first was seen over New York, and it went across the United States. Mm -hmm. It took about a half an hour, much, much, much too slow for a meteor. Came low over Utah, actually caused a power outage in the city of Nephi, caused cars to stall, and uh, went over to the, another town in Utah where it landed and caused another power outage. This was verified by Stead Air Force Base and other military officials. Um, at least four bases were tracking this object on radar. I mean, it's an amazing case. And, uh, you know, it knocked out power, it knocked out people's car engines. It was so bright that it made the area look like day. And the street lamps, which are, you know, photoelectric, all went dark because they assumed it was daytime. I mean, this is how bright it was. So many people saw this thing. And, uh, took off again, went over to, uh, like, south of Reno, where it crashed. And uh, this is pretty much all the information that Edwards was able to get. But, uh, you know, since then, you know, Randall's picked up the case and others mm -hmm. and uh, interviewed a lot of people. And, you know, now we know pretty much the whole thing from start to end. It's a great case. But where is and, the crashed object? Um, well, it was scooped up by this, you know, the MJ-12 group. Oh. Uh, there's... Uh, Randall says he was able to interview an Air Force officer who was at the site and uh, said the, the UF, it was a definite saucer-shaped object, the whole deal that, you know, we hear with Roswell and other areas. So uh, I, I want to see these crafts. You know, this whole yeah. disclosure thing has got to start happening sooner than later. All right, so that's the, that's, that's the number one on, of your three. So what is number two? Or, or was Charles Hall number one? Then you've got this crash in, uh, that we just talked about. What's number three? The, the, I, what I think is uh, Nevada's biggest UFO story is obviously Area 51. And uh, this is one that's just developing and continuing to get more information about. And we all know the main story, obviously, mm -hmm. with uh, you know, Bob Lazar coming out in 1989 and uh, with uh, John Lear and George Naff publicizing it and people going there and watching these objects go in and out of the base. Uh, but it goes on from there. I mean, what I found really interesting, uh, probably the most interesting thing I found out about Area 51 was Fate Magazine did this experiment where they asked remote viewers and psychics and uh, people who were astral travelers to go visit Area 51 and report on their impressions. And boy, it was interesting what they found. Uh, but can we really take that seriously? Like we're we're not talking we're we're not talking about we're not talking about photographs we're not talking about physical evidence we're talking a little bit here my friend of the woo woo factor right these are you know people got their impressions in different ways you know, uh -huh. I, I'm a big believer in this stuff you know I wrote a book on astral travel I've experienced it many times myself and got really good at it at, you know so this is something I absolutely know is true for myself. But what I thought was interesting about this experiment is the corroboration. There was a number of these people who reported that there was, I mean, they heard, you heard the normal things, mm -hmm. aircraft being re-engineered, ETs working on the base, um, experiments in genetics and things like this and visibility. A couple of them also said that there were experiments with time travel, which I thought was kind of interesting. But what I found most interesting is there was about five respondents who said something I've never heard before. And that was 
the employees at Area 51 have been genetically altered or engineered in some way to improve their health and longevity. And uh, each one of them said it in, you know, slightly different words. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, not anything I've certainly heard before and kind of uh, makes sense to what Lazar said, which is that these ETs have made over 50 genetic corrections the human race. All right, but let, let's just okay. let's just take a look at Bob Lazar for a few minutes here. I think people give him way too much credit, way too much. How many other employees of Area Fifty One have come out and given the, the 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 believers the information that Lazar has given, and what facts and what evidence has Lazar right. ever brought forward? Well, Lazar obviously claims he was the target of a huge disinformation campaign. Uh. And, uh, you know, even if you throw Lazar out of the whole story, Uh there are researchers like Bill Hamilton and Wendell Stevens and others who, George Knapp, who collectively, um, Lyndall Moulton Howe, have Mm -hmm. uh, interviewed over 40 or 50 people who are absolutely confirming everything that Lazar said, maybe not to quite the extent. But where's the proof? Where's the evidence? As As a journalist, you know... Preston, right. that you need the evidence. Unless you get the evidence, it's hearsay. It's a it's a fabric. It's a fairy tale. It it it's based on one person's or or the beliefs of the people who are giving you the story. It can't be collaborated. It can be corroborated, absolutely. I and mean, if two people are saying the same thing, that's you know they shouldn't know. This is corroboration. No, is it you know proof? No, and this is a very frustrating thing. Let me tell you about this. Yeah. We have some evidence. Absolutely. I mean, there's the implant removal cases. There's thousands of, of uh, landing trace cases, which are pretty darn persuasive. Uh, the book I wrote, UFO mm-hmm. Healings, has some pretty good evidence in it. Like what kind of evidence? Um, well, there is a case with Bill Hamilton where he was able to uh, interview a witness who has, was diagnosed with a cyst. He has the x-rays showing it, and she had an encounter, and the cyst disappeared, and they've got the, uh, she went to the doctor. They were not able to explain it, mm-hmm. and he has the after x-rays showing you know, that this thing disappeared. All right. Did you actually interview that person? Um, I, well, I didn't talk to her directly about that incident. I know who she is, and I've mm-hmm. talked to her before yeah. about so- her encounter, but... Uh, You see, I think this is where the big problem is within the UFO community. There's a lot of speculation. But when it comes down to the the proof, the evidence, there is none. If if, if President... Well, well, wait a sec, hold uh, on here. Where? From Dr. Roger Lear? Yeah. A podiatrist. Right. It's terrible. You know, people like... And I'm just a bookkeeper. I mean, I should not be doing this stuff. It should be throwing some serious money and attention at it. Because we know this subject is real. I mean, there is no doubt it's real. It's It's real, but what is is the reality, Preston? What is real? Is it experimental aircraft that we are developing? Or, or, Or is it, in fact... Something from outer space, an, another race, a UFO. Let me, ask, let me ask you this. If President Clinton could not have a presidential affair with Monica Lewinsky without the world knowing in a matter of months, in the most secure building in the entire free world, how in the name of God can you hide crashed UFOs, underground bases, extraterrestrials walking down the streets of of Las Vegas without this whistle being blown sky high? There's a simple answer to that. You can't. And it's been a disastrous failure. And this is why most people believe that the government is hiding information about UFOs. Um, this is why you know, th- this situation is so volatile right now. Because the proof is there. Where? It's in mostly military bases, places like Wright-Patterson, Area 51, Norton, Edwards. I mean, we know where this stuff is as researchers. It's been pointed at again and again and again. Mm-hmm. Getting to it, that's another point. Yeah, I want the alien. I want the body on the table. Sure. You know, sure. Um, and I think that if we push towards this, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see that Roswell craft in a museum. If it's real, and I think it is, the truth kind of has a way of taking care of itself. This stuff is going to bust wide open sooner or later. 
But what happens if it doesn't? Where we're at. What happens if it doesn't? Um, well, then it doesn't. But I just—that's not the way it's trending. It's certainly trending towards disclosure. We got more and more whistleblowers. Um, no, they aren't bringing. And we've got photographs, but you know, photographs aren't great evidence at this point. Mm -hmm. They can be easily doctored. Yeah. Um, and for that matter, films can. Sure. Um, so they're not great evidence either, unless they're supported by multiple witnesses, like mm -hmm. the you know, Mexico eclipse in 1992. Uh, Mexico City had hundreds of witnesses and multiple videotapes which were triangulated, showing these objects. So there's definitely some impressive photographic evidence out there. But uh, yeah, I'm really frustrated. You know, I'm I, I'm not sure what else to do, and that's kind of why I'm pounding at this subject and trying to educate people. Because it's absolutely real. Please, no please don't take what I'm going to say wrong. But how can you <laughs> how can you try to educate people without the evidence to substantiate what you're trying to tell them that is true? Well, if you're thinking about throwing away eyewitness testimony, well, that's going to destroy all science completely. You know, this is basically what the foundation of knowledge is based on: us telling stories to each mm -hmm. other. Right. Um, and uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm getting the information out there. I interview people, you know, with the, and I'm always really excited when I have a multiple witness case because mm -hmm. that's you know, more verification. Right. Um, and uh, as a researcher who's been in the field for a very long time, you can kind of spot certain red flags and rare details that kind of indicate a real experience. And you can tell, for, for that matter, you know, by someone's sincerity or their emotional level, unless they're a great actor. Mm -hmm. which not everyone is, you know, so at some point, or, I mean, I was convinced, it took me about, you know, wasn't instantly, I'll tell you, I was two, three years there really upset trying to understand what was going on, but the evidence speaks for itself. You, you keep on saying the evidence, and I've never seen any evidence, and I've been doing this I mean, show for 23 years. Well, there's landing trace. There's landing trace cases, a number of very well verified ones. Um, but you don't have the, you don't have the craft that did the landing, so you can't say with 100 percent certainty that this was caused by a, a craft from another planet, another dimension, another sphere. All you right. can say is something landed and left. Right or wrong. Well, you're right. I mean, you're playing the devil's advocate here, and I'm going to disagree because I think there's, you can say with, you know, maybe not 100% certainty, but 99% certainty in a lot of these cases. Um, certainly the Phoenix Lights was seen by enough people to leave no doubt that this was something extremely unusual. Something and extremely unusual? I will agree with you 200% on that, my friend. <laughs> I will. Was it an alien craft? You know, I think that the logical conclusion is that this is what we're in because obviously they're not military craft if they are we have jets chasing mm -hmm. these objects um obviously not military craft if these objects are hovering over cars and pulling them up to the sky um there's three cases like that in nevada um there's cases like that in every state i've investigated so far so uh, so, so there, there's actual cases where a ufo went over a car and pulled it up a lot like on a tractor beam right and right. what happened to the car? Was it let down gently? And uh, what did anybody do any testing to see if there was any alteration in the in the atomic structure of the metal of the vehicle to collaborate that that story to to you know to give credence to it? Um, yeah, there was a case like that. Yeah, I'd have to pull that up the details. Mm -hmm. But uh, the mechanic was really impressed by the damage. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if that was a Nevada case or a New Mexico. What about a scientist? An expert? Um, well, wait, are you kidding? So many scientists are looking to this. The problem is there is a cover-up, and it's been very effective to a certain extent. Is the cover-up being perpetrated by the scientific community, or is the cover-up being, uh, you know... Is to, the, to a certain it, extent, by the... Yeah. Absolutely. Or what about the there UFO people themselves? They have everything to lose if, in fact, it is proven that UFOs do not exist, that they're actually terrestrial craft, military craft, experimental craft, that it has nothing to do with little green men or little gray men. They have everything to lose. They, have, they are going to be the laughingstock of society, you know, so 
why not keep the conspiracy alive to keep credibility? First of all, not going to happen. Um, absolutely, we know this is real, so that's just ludicrous. And you know what? The purpose of UFO research is to solve the mysteries. If it should turn out they're not ETs, I don't think that the whole UFO research community is going to you know, cry about it. Um, really, we're just trying to solve a mystery here, and at least I am. You know, I can't I, speak for other UFO researchers. But all right, what does it I, take? I can, what does it take to solve a mystery? Um, well, you, you know, I hate mysteries, and this is why I'm <laughs> in this uh, field. You um, have to find what the truth is, and once you find out what the truth is, the mystery is solved, right? Right. Well, I mean, here's a good example of some what's frustrating about this field is the Topanga okay. Canyon UFO wave. Mm -hmm. um, this was on a night when the police received a number of calls as did the local newspaper, The Messenger, mm -hmm. who called me up and asked me to investigate. And uh, I found a number of witnesses right away, and all of them described basically these flying objects that are typically described as hovering, as darting, mm -hmm. um, and moving in, in unconventional ways. And there were large numbers of them. I've continued to get witnesses, and today I have almost, you know, 25 to 30 independent adult witnesses from different areas, you know, in this canyon on the same night um, who saw this stuff. So, I mean, I know something went down yeah. by pretty much 100%. What was it? They were UFOs. What were the UFOs? It's my assessment that they are alien craft. But what did you, what do you Can base, it? No. what do you base that on, though? Your, your own belief? No, I base that on all the accounts of people that I've interviewed, all the you know stuff I've heard from other right. researchers. I okay. base it on you know certainly not no, it's not belief or faith, and uh, it's really you know difficult to interview people who are too much UFO zealots or too much UFO skeptics. Either direction mm -hmm. um, makes it very difficult. You know, you mentioned Area Fifty One uh, before, and how the uh, you know you you've got people who deliberately break the law to try and uncover the, the truth behind what is happening at Area 51. They see strange things in the sky. I, I, I remember going back to uh, the late, well, I guess it would be the late 80s, just before, uh, during the first Gulf War. You had all these UFO uh, enthusiasts who were seeing all these strange lights over the skies of Area 51. And they would go out, they'd rent Doppler radar systems, they'd come out with all this all this equipment, and they'd see lights in the sky, yet they were showing no Doppler return. It just turned out to be the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk going through its final trials before being sent over to the Gulf. Yeah, well, that may be the case. I think that when you're looking at UFOs over a military base, you do mm -hmm. have to be careful because in some cases I think these are yeah. our craft and that's what it appears to be and that's what the information that is coming out from you know sources within these bases is saying you're right so, yeah I, and I've been told you know maybe 20 percent of what people are seeing or more mm -hmm. is us flying these things around right so uh, I don't know if that's true or not but uh you know it's it's, it's just like the people to that it's just like the people who say that there's reverse engineering going on because of the extraterrestrials either working with the government or the extraterrestrial crafts that have crashed. If this is the case, why are we still using the rocket technology, the propulsion technology that we're using today that takes months and months and months to get from Earth to Mars if we have this technology? There are so many know, things that do not make sense Makes no sense, and I totally agree with you, unless we're doing it in secret, and this is all just a whitewash like the whole Blue Book thing was. Here's something that I find a pattern, you know, this is something that uh, I think I'm, I've been able to uncover in research is uh, weird patterns, and mm -hmm. this is a pattern that keeps turning up um, with the people that, who have abductions and contact. Um, I've, this is something I've learned to ask people now, do you have any military in your family? Mm -hmm. And uh, Larger than normal, for sure. Um, seem to have people who are working on even top secret type projects that they won't talk about. So that's something that you know. I don't know how to explain that, and I don't know what it means. But it's a pattern that I've well, noticed. Well, let's let's take a look. You know that you, that's 
that point to me would be very simple to explain. Look at how many veterans are still alive from World War II, the Korean conflict, Vietnam, and all the theaters in the Middle East. I am sure that if you were to go on the street and stop 10 people, at least four of those people would have members of the military in their family. Yeah, that could be the case, but uh, what um, what I found is that a lot of these people have are working in areas that they can't talk about. I don't know if that's regular for the military or not, but uh, perhaps mm-hmm. it is. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, it's, I think a really interesting time for this field, uh, and uh, I think we're going to see more things like Phoenix lights, like the wave of UFO sightings over Topanga Canyon, mm-hmm. like the Hudson Valley wave. Yeah, um, you know, like, like Stevensville. Mm-hmm. So one, and one of these guys, they're going to show up, and you know, we'll have the proof. You know, I want that to believe, Preston. Gonna... Preston, I want to believe, but I want to see I'll the proof. <laughs> I mean, I've seen a UFO a number of times. Mm-hmm. Never believed in the stuff growing up. Never really looked for it. Found out it was real. Went looking for it and saw them. I've had, you know, four or five pretty impressive sightings, um, and I was not alone. So there were other people watching this uh, with me. Um, why would so the government? Why would the government need to cover this up? How could they perpetrate a cover up of this magnitude? I mean, we're just not talking about the government of the United States or the government of Canada or the government of the United Kingdom. We're talking about every government on this planet. We can't get along for so many reasons. How is it that all these governments are working together to maintain the secrecy? And the fact that the ETs are here. Well, they are and they aren't. I mean, yes, it's kind of an open conspiracy. It's a very strange situation where uh, we have, you know, that yes, there is a cover up. This is evidenced by the fact that, you know, witnesses, even in Stevens, as late as Stevensville, were threatened by military officials and, you know, told not to talk about what they saw. Um, how do they do it? You know, it's, they, they do their best. And, uh, it's worked for a very long time, but now it's coming apart. I mean, look at Roswell. It was nearly a disaster in terms of a cover-up. Mm-hmm. We nearly had that UFO on our table. It was that close with that press release. Oh, oh, oh. it just gone the other way. All right, now hold on here. Let's let's talk about Roswell <laughs> for a sec. All right, you've got Jesse right. Marcel. Jesse Marcel. Everybody bends down and gives Jesse Marcel these great kudos. Personally, I think he's a nut. Because what do you have? You have a base intelligence officer who goes to pick up evidence at Brazel's farm. Somehow, he thought or he knew that this was something out of this world. So instead of taking his vehicle and hauling ass back to the Air Force Base, what does he do? He breaks the chain of custody by going home and waking up his wife and his child and letting them manhandle evidence. Right then and there, the Roswell UFO crash is dead. The chain of custody has been broken. Anything that Jesse Marcel says cannot be taken seriously or as the truth. Well... I, I think you're going a little too far. There. Why? Why? Mean. Why? Why am I going too far? If a police officer, I mean, yes, if a police officer goes to a crime scene, we're talking about picks a craft up, alien craft. This you don't know a it's a craft gun. alien craft. Well, it was pretty clear it was, and this is one of the best cases we got. It is one of the, the biggest cases. cases. It's one of the biggest cases of cow poop that the UFO uh, community it, ever has. <laughs> Could not disagree more. Could hundreds of witnesses. Absolutely, we know what happens from the beginning, from people who saw this thing coming down, from people who are in the radar room tracking it on radar, people who went out to the site and picked up the wreckage, people who worked on the bodies. All right, and the people who the went and they picked up the infor- they picked up the evidence, drove it home, let his kids play with it, let his child play with it, then decided to go to the Air Force Base. Come on. Um, who's that you wouldn't have done the same thing. This is an alien craft. You I did. Thing, you you know? are surmising it was an alien craft because you did but, not see it. No. There no, is no did. evidence. It. Big deal. I can describe Santa Claus, and we all know he isn't real. 
I can describe the Easter Bunny. I can describe the Tooth Fairy. It's not real. And yet, just no, because, Rob, Rob just Will. because Jesse Marcel, the base intelligence officer, <laughs> come on. No, I'm not. I'm holding fast on this one. Roswell is not going to go away. Um, and, uh, no, you know why it's I'm not, not going to go away? Alone. Do you know why it's not going to go away? Because it's a cash cow it's for a dead case. city. It's a cash cow uh, for a dead yeah. city. It's a cash cow for a bunch of wannabe researchers who need something to cling on to their 15 minutes of fame with. Well, you know, everyone's certainly entitled to sure. their opinion, but I think you're being a little harsh. I'm being really, honest. I mean, I'm being totally honest. I'm being totally honest. Call. That's not what it's all about. Oh, not come on. Take, come people on. People take this proud. This is part of New Mexico. Wait a second. How can you say they are... take it crap proud when they turn it into a, a, a fair with people wearing alien suits doing all this stupid stuff because... They need an excuse for a party. Nope, this is just a celebration like any other culture does. You know, any or any other cult. Or any other cult. Any other community. You know, people who have been bereft of their rights are forced to do this and to bring attention to this subject in whatever way they can. This is a subject that I take extremely seriously. Oh. I think there's the potential to change society in a number of different oh, ways. Oh, it sure does. Including, it sure you know, does. I think it could solve the energy crisis by getting this technology to the public. It could solve the environmental crisis by using it to clean our mess up. And it could solve the economic crisis, which is really largely en- engineered and based on this whole oil economy. Uh, okay. All that could be disappeared overnight. Let me, Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. You're a very intelligent person. I don't doubt that one bit. Why then, if all this wonderful cleanup turning everything around, can really happen. Why don't the ETs just land and take care of all our problems? Or are we, as a society, putting too much faith into the ETs because we've screwed everything up here on this planet and we don't want to take responsibility for our for the mess we've made? So we're hoping that little UFO Charlie is going to land or that his technology that apparently crashed is going to be the answer to our disaster. All right. Well, now you are asking me to speculate. I don't know the answers to these questions, but I, you know, I do have my opinions, certainly. Yeah. I think um, you know that UFOs know better than to just land at this point and give away their technology, because we would abuse it. Imagine if they, you know, this book I wrote, UFO Healings, covers, mm-hmm. you know, 100 cases. That was right. a while back. There was probably 200 cases. They have this technology to cure what appears to be you know, incurable diseases like cancer, diphtheria, mm-hmm. it goes on and on. If we had this technology, we would surely abuse it. And the I've got, got I, their hands a hold of it, they would use it to send soldiers out and bring them back. I have had up, guests on out. the show who are naturopaths who have ways of healing lung cancer, who have ways of healing other diseases and other ailments. They're not extraterrestrials. Right. They're not ETs. No. And yet they're doing this, and there are scientists who are working on the energy problem. There are scientists who are working on the global climate problems we have based on our, 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 our thirst for industrial uh, supremacy. So, I, you know, let's stop giving these stupid aliens that no one can prove exist all this oh. credit, all this credit, and take responsibility oh. for what yeah. we've done. And that we as a human race, and that we as a human race can solve these problems, that we don't need E.T., who couldn't even figure out a way to call home right away. Uh, you, know, it, it, you know, and it's, it's, it's no, no, ironic. People are, are told by E.T.s. There's, this is very, something I hear in, over and over again. Uh-huh. People are taken on board a uh-huh. craft. They're yeah. told the same types of messages, which is... This has not changed from the contactee era through abductions. Right. It doesn't change no matter what country you go to, no matter what language you speak. Uh-huh. They are giving us warnings about nuclear proliferation, about well, overpopulation. It doesn't, about take a, doesn't take an ET to tell you that, for God's sake. Anybody with a third no, of a brain on their head knows that but we're looking at nuclear problems. Oh, come on. Yeah, they're very concerned about it. Well, they're why don't they do something about, about it then? 
because it's up to us to solve our own oh, problems. Oh, isn't We're not grow isn't that way. isn't that a neat little clause they have? The non-interference clause that Gene Roddenberry talked about in a science fiction program called Star Trek. So the ETs watch Star Trek, and they said, you know what, that's a pretty good clause. If anybody asks us why we don't help planet Earth that we're so concerned about, we're just going to say, hey, I'm sorry, non-interference clause. Yeah, this is what kept, kept me out of UFO research. Honest to God, was, it was too Star Trek for me, but you're sort of stuck with the evidence. The stories that people are saying are the types of ETs they're seeing. So uh, you know what? Yes, that appears to be the case. Do you know but what? If there was consistency within the UFO community, I could take it a lot more seriously. I could. But because of the inconsistency, some people say there's one alien race. Other people say there are 82 alien races. Other people say that there are plant alien races on the planet that have chloroform in their, uh, chlorophyll in their, in their system instead of blood. You've got people who are saying so many different things. There is no consistency. Um, well, there absolutely is consistency. I would say 80%, 70% of the people I talk to who have claimed to see ETs mm -hmm. have seen some version of what they, what I would call the grays. Um, and I don't have any reptilian cases other than a very scattered few, right. um, a number of uh, praying mantis-type cases. So I'm going to say there's two or three cases, uh, types of races that I've heard. Um, I think it's very consistent, and this is what a lot of people are reporting. In fact, there's all kinds of consistence, consistency and con details within these stories that uh, are absolutely you know, consistent, regardless of education, culture, or anything like this. I mean, it's so obviously true. Where would, the, where would the UFO community be without the Internet? Um, it would be in a much tougher spot. UFOs are extremely popular mm -hmm. on the Internet next well, to sex, which is number one. Oh. Um, so, yeah, the whole movement has been largely pushed to the Internet. Uh, uh, oh, by, the the way, it, by the way, in my opinion, the Internet is the largest septic tank that man has ever created because there's more crap in it than anything else. Um, yeah, well, it's a wonderful thing. It's a global library. It's a way to connect all of humanity, and it's changed the way... You know, we do business for sure. Sure. But here's another question for you based on the Internet, because it seems that a lot of the UFO community use the Internet for their research. Whether it's true or false, they just gobble it all up. You've got, you've got computer hacking going on around the world. You've got Julia Sand, you've got uh, Edward Snowden, you've got the Chinese hacking into the Americans, you've got the Russians hacking into the Americans, and the list goes on and on and on. How come there has been no evidence found in any computer hack that proves that the United States or any other country is suppressing information about UFOs? Oh, we absolutely do have it. I mean, if you take one look at um, John Greenwald's website, Black oh, Vault, on, filled you. with documents that absolutely 100% prove that our government has been studying this phenomena and has a very, very strong interest and is covering it up. Oh, wait, no wait, a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. There's a big difference between a government having a strong interest and a government saying, we have a crashed flying saucer that crashed in Roswell, New Mexico, July 1947, that three extraterrestrial bodies are presently being kept at Wright-Patterson Wright, uh, Wright Air Force Base. Well, a number of document specialists have looked at the MJ-12 papers and declared them genuine. They're extremely controversial. Ask Kevin Randall about the MJ-12 papers. Uh, Kevin Randall... Ah, uh, you see, you were talking about his research before when it kind of was going on the way of the ufologist. But man, you, you know, you talk about Kevin Randall and the research he does on the MJ-12 and how he disag disagrees with Stanton Friedman about the MJ-12 papers, and automatically it's whoa, well, Kevin Randall. Mm. <laughs> I am saying that there is an enormous amount of evidence for this stuff, and and I. 
can't believe that you're genuinely skeptical. I think you're just playing the devil's advocate. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not playing the devil's advocate. I am really not. I do not believe 95, no, 99.9% what the UFO community believes. Well, maybe I'd love it, you know, if you looked at my research, and you know, I'll send you my books, and I, I'm telling you. But this stuff is absolutely real. Do I have the body? No. Do I have an implant? No, but I've certainly you know, seen some of the evidence for that. D- you see- evidence comes in a number of different forms. We've got our best evidence still is eyewitness mm-hmm. testimony, multiple eyewitness testimony. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something, buddy. We offered several of the top UFO researchers who make claims that they know for a fact that UFOs are real, and they have made very, very strange claims as to the existence of evidence. We offered to bring them on the show and have them go through a polygraph using a PSE, Psychological Stress Evaluator. They all declined. Well, I don't... I mean, they I all that, declined. There's a lot of cases that are... Up- 100% supported by lie detector tests. And I would absolutely take one. I have no problem with that. No, you see, we weren't going with a lie detector. We were going with a psychological stress evaluator that monitors the FM frequencies that cannot be tampered with like a I'll lie detector too. can. I, I, no, Polygraph listen. Test, no, no problem. You are basing your beliefs on what other people have told you. You would pass the test. I want to get you know, the people I, who are making the claims that they saw the bodies, they saw the crash saucers, they were abducted, they had implants. They're the people that all declined. Well, I've seen this stuff, and I'll certainly take whatever kind of stress test, psychological, whatever you want. I mean, I know this stuff is real, and I've talked to a lot of people. I think most people at this point know this is real. I understand skepticism it's difficult to accept a lot of the stuff why do you why do you, why do you think the mainstream why do you think mainstream yeah why do you think mainstream media pays no more attention to ufo you know uh, stories it's old news well, they do. it's all speculation and nothing can be proven not true not true there was a recent case where this object hit a chinese airplane and left this huge dent in it there was photos all over the internet. There's another case of... Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, ju- you just said object. internet. You just said internet. I'm not talking about... I'm not ta- I'm talking about Fox the- News. I'm talking about CNN. I'm talking about MSNBC, oh, right. yeah. ABC, the real media, not the crap that's on the internet. No, oh, that, that was on the evening news. It was absolutely as so was the Chicago O'Hare Airport. Oh, listen, Chica- Chicago, so O'Hare, Chicago O'Hare Airport the UFO case, that is so phony, it's not even funny. <laughs> no, it's absolutely true. No, it's not. Number of people saw this from different locations. It was photographed, pilots saw it, passengers on planes saw it, airport workers saw it. So I don't see how you can say it's phony. Well, because I haven't seen one photograph that can be proven to be what people claim it to be. Well, you know, the evidence, in my opinion, is out there in the public arena. Certainly enough to prove that this is a real phenomena and probably extraterrestrial. Um, wait wait a sec, did you just say probably? Did you just say probably? Well, I yep, I sure did, because I want to leave the door open a little bit, because this is just my assessment at this point. I can't prove it. So you're not sure. But the evidence is absolutely... Well, no, I'm not a UFO believer. I'm oh? someone who's... no. This is not something I have faith in. For me, I'm a researcher who's trying to find the truth, and I'll tell and, you what. And I isn't research based on it. fact? Um, it absolutely is. Okay. Research is based on all, you know, the search for knowledge mm-hmm. through scientific methods. You right. Know? When I did this uh, UFOs over Topanga Canyon investigation, mm-hmm. well, that was the biggest one I ever did. I was out there pounding the streets, you know, calling the police who were referring me cases. Um, absolutely, you know, I do this what I can with my limited abilities, mm-hmm. um, limited funds. Sure. And uh, um, I'm not letting this go. I mean, you can say you're skeptical of it, and that's fine. But I'm, I'm going to disagree 100. percent I know it's real. Whoa! Well, no, no, you, that's not subject. what you said. That's not what you said a few minutes ago. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you, I said I know. 
no, 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 no. You can't, you can't, you can't have both sides of the coin. It's either you're a believer or you're a skeptic. I know it's real. I think it's probably extraterrestrial, but I can't prove it. You know it's That's, real. If you want, I know it's real. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt. There's. Then what do you think? All right, based on the no fact that you say you know it's real, what is the reality right. of the topic then? Um, the reality of the topic is this is a global phenomenon. Uh -huh. It's been going on for a very long time. Mm -hmm. It's something that's not going to go away. Um, it's pretty clear, I think most researchers agree, on what the origins of this thing is, that it's extraterrestrial. Where they come from, we don't know that. But certainly now when I interview someone who hasn't read all these UFO books and things like this, I can predict a large, to a large extent what they're going to say because this is something I've been researching for a very long time. But is there, it, real. is there anyone on this planet who hasn't been subjected to the UFO hype? Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's true. It's, I mean, everyone to their own extent. Mm -hmm. I know people who don't own a TV, they yeah. don't listen to the radio. I, I have a... My brother's friend has never read a book in his life, wow. other than in school. So I'm like, you're kidding. He, you know, cause I've written all these books, and he has not even read. You know, he's a good example. He's also, you know, um, he's absolutely uh, believes in this stuff. But you see, what I was getting at before is that the UFO community can't come together on this. Everybody has their own stories. Like, for, for a part of the conversation, it sounded to me like you agreed with what Kevin Randall was saying, and yet when it came to the MJ-12 papers and how Kevin wow. Randall disagrees with Stanton Friedman and what you believe, it was, oh, Kevin Randall. Like, Well, I just I would disagree with his statements on that. He also called the, the Walton case a hoax. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. One of his books. Yeah. He backpedaled a large, to a large extent on the Roswell book that he put out. So, you know, I've had some questions let's put it that way well maybe he's maybe he's just taking another look at the research and the data and saying you know what i may have been wrong at well, least at least he's at, at least he, at least situation. he's at least he's got the balls to say maybe i'm wrong instead I mean, of donald just going menzel. pardon the, uh, donald menzel this is the, someone we who we thought was a skeptic who turned out to be a paid government informant doing work you know to, to bash this subject just like the Condon Committee purposefully tried to de you know, debunk this phenomenon when they knew good and well it was real. Well, how can you say it's real when, you, when, you, when you're when you when not sure yourself? I am 100% sure it's real. I've told you that over and over. But, I'm not going to change so, my so, guns so, on so, so according to you, according to you, ETs are here, UFOs are here, they're real. Um, I think that ETs are here. I know the UFO phenomena is real. I think what it's pointing towards, the best explanation that we have at this point is ET. Can I prove it? No. I think it's extremely likely that this is what we're looking at, though. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised um, when this oh. busts wide open. I'm I sure, and I think the people who way. are going to be the most surprised are the people in the UFO community. Hey, Preston, we've got to say so long for tonight. I want to thank you so much for coming on. ExoNation, Preston Dennett has been our guest this hour, www.prestondennett.weebly.com.